All right, good morning. Um, it's uh, Dr. David Johnson here at the Back Pain Centre. Um, the purpose of this video is to just give a bit of an overview on clinical examination of patients who would be presenting with uh, spine related pain. Um, and hopefully this might help some of the viewers who conduct um, teleconsultations with myself and are required to perform an assessment of lower limb neurological function or, and upper limb neurological function and an assessment of their pain. So here we've got our patient who um, will be in this example presenting with some low back pain symptoms. Uh, which is one of the most common uh, presentations that need, needs to be assessed um, in uh, medico-legal work. Um, so what we would be doing in the first instance is uh, assessing their gait. So I'll get Joanne to stand up for us. Um, and one of, the, one of the simple things that we do is we just want to observe the way that they walk. And so Joanne, can you just um, walk towards the wall there for us? And of course, when we do video consultations, um, the, the camera should be focusing on the patient's ability uh, to, uh, to walk and clearly show their, uh, their body in, um, in total. And so the other thing that we would do while the patient is standing up is to ask them to say, stand on their tippy toes. So if you come over here, Joanne, and if you could stand on your tippy toes for me. Okay, and that, that confirms that under the person's body weight, they have the power, and that's relatively normal power to be able to stand up, stand up on your tippy toes. Um, if there is any deficit in uh, strength of plantar flexion, then the ability to stand up on your tippy toes is normally reduced. If there's any concern, we can then isolate one side. So Joanne, if you turn around for us and um, just hold on to the side there, uh, if you can face the camera as well face the camera, stand side on, and if you could just lift up one leg and then stand up on your tippy toes, and that isolates one side, because sometimes the other side that's good may compensate for some weakness that's, that's uh, uh, compromised. And so we can then compare both left and right. And then also if we walk on our heels, can we just stand on our heels and walk like that? That's a good test for dorsiflexion power. Uh, and also balance at the same time. The other test that we'll do for balance is uh, get you to stand over here facing the camera and we just put your feet together and then we put your arms to the ceiling, rotate your arms palm upwards and then you close your eyes. And then this is called Romberg's test and I'm just assessing for any imbalance and then open your eyes. Okay, that's fine. And also if the patient has any Romberg uh, features or if you're concerned that the patient has any um, uh, coordination issues just be ready to support the patient in case they fall over. So now we come back to the actual clinical examination. Ideally we don't want the, the examination couch to be too high and we don't want it to be completely flat so just picking a nice sort of 20, 20 degrees is, an, is a comfortable um, uh, level of inclination and we want you to be nice and high on the bed if you could pop up a little bit higher that's great ideally the examination couch should be able to be approached from both sides um, because sometimes we'll do a clinical assessment of the sacroiliac joints and it's, it's a lot easier to be able to access the patient from both sides but if you only have ability to access from one side generally the convention is that you're standing on the, the right hand side of the patient Okay, so when we're doing a lower limb neurological assessment, we just divide that into basic tone, power, reflexes, coordination, and sensation. So five things, and, and this is, uh, once you practice this a lot of times, it can be very quick. It doesn't have to be an overly lengthy procedure, but it needs to be done precisely and accurately to get consistency in clinical examination and findings. So what I do, patient's hand by your sides, relax and I just say let the let the legs go to sleep let me do all the work don't help me uh, during this testing unless I ask you so what I'm going to do now is just assess tone the easiest way to assess tone is just to give the legs a little bit of a, a wiggle like that and just observe the feet and how they move 
in respond to the shaking. Okay, that's, that's a really simple way of assessing tone in conjunction with having just observed them walking. And then the other way that we add to that is we just do some nice range of motion assessment of hip flexion and extension and knee flexion and extension. We do that with both sides. And generally you're always comparing left and right, just identifying if there's any asymmetry. Sometimes that may cause a little bit of pain when you do that, if they have a lot of pain symptoms or they're hypersensitive or they have some central sensitization. Even doing those types of things may cause pain. If you observe the patient grimacing, you just say, hey, um, sorry about that, where, where did that hurt? Just show me where that caused any discomfort and that gives you further information. The next manoeuvre that I would do would be to check um, a straight leg raise. And so I'll just say, um, keep the knee straight, don't help me, I'm going to do the movement and I just do a straight leg raise. Tell me if there's any pain at any point, okay? And once they um, uh, describe the development of pain symptoms, it's then very important to ask them where they feel the pain. Um, because if they feel the pain in their back, that can have a different um, uh, meaning to uh, if they feel the pain shooting down their lower limbs. And so you want to ask that and be specific. Where do you feel the pain uh, when I do a straight leg raise? And then I can add to the neural tension feature by just doing a little dorsiflexion of the foot and see if that makes it worse. Okay, so that's your, that's your assessment of um, neural tension in the lumbar nerve roots with the straight leg raise. Okay, so now we then move on to, um, uh, I generally will move on to reflexes. Um, and the way I test reflexes, I take the weight of the, the knee and I'm testing the, the tendon reflex at the, at the um, patella tendon. And often patients will try to help you. You kind of feel them lifting their leg up. And I say, no, no, don't, don't help me. Let me feel the weight of your limb. Let the leg go to sleep. And then I'm just taking the weight. If I take my hand away, the leg will fall down because they're not helping me. And so I can feel the weight that, um, of the leg and I know that the patient's not helping me. And then I hold my tendon hammer. I see so many people doing this and it's, it's kind of very frustrating because you can't hit a tendon reflex like that. Okay, hold the tendon hammer the way it's designed to be held. That's why it's this long. It's long like this for a reason, for some flexibility in the plastic handle. Hold it at the, at the, at the distal end and just aim for the tendon hammer, uh, aim for the patella tendon. Usually it doesn't matter if you, you don't get it directly, but you can feel the soft bit of the tendon there. There it is. And that's kind of where you want to elicit the tendon reflex. And just let it drop. Let it drop on the tendon. Okay, you're not going to get a good response if you do this. Okay, that's not the way to elicit a tendon <laughs> reflex. Okay, and so you want to just go boom, hit the tendon in the right spot. If you don't get it the first time, it's okay, you can do it a few times. And if the patient's really not getting a response or getting the, the response that you thought you may have obtained, you can do something called the Gendrasic Maneuver. And the Gendrasic Maneuver is this. You ask the patient to do a monkey grip. Okay, monkey grip. Don't pull yet. Don't do any, don't pull your fingers apart yet until I say so. And this is the maneuver. And you just go back into the position. Okay, and then you say, okay, Joanne, now pull, your, pull the monkey grip apart. And the, she, she exerts herself. And that typically will accentuate the tendon reflex okay and that's if you think yes that there's no reason if you're suspicious that there shouldn't you should have a normal tendon reflex but there isn't um, and your clinical acumen says that yes there should be that's a, a useful test to bring to the surface that normal tendon reflex and again we're comparing left and don't help me don't help, I can see Joanne trying to help me so I want to feel the weight of that leg and now boom I'm now getting a normal two plus tendon response. So that's your knee reflexes done. And then now we're going to test the ankle reflex. It's a bit awkward when they're sitting, when they're laying in this position. So what we need to do, I'm going to just cock the knee out a little bit. Just let that knee fall down and relax. And generally the patient's foot will then go into a plantar flex position. So I'm going to then dorsiflex the foot a little bit. Again, I need to tell you to relax your calf muscle, relax that calf muscle. Don't help me. Hold the tendon hammer again at the distal end and then elicit the tendon reflex. 
Okay, and you can see I can feel uh, a plantar flexion in my hand, and I can also see the muscle contracting. Okay, and that is um, the way that you elicit the ankle reflex reliably. And obviously, if you're doing it reliably and there isn't a reflex, then we can say there's no ankle reflex. But if you're not doing it well, then it's not precise to then say there is no reflex. There is a reflex, it's just that you're not eliciting it, eliciting it properly. Okay, and I can feel the reflex there. We'll try the Jurassic maneuver again. So monkey grip. Okay, don't pull yet. Okay, pull now. And there's a little bit of a, a more significant, minor, not, not a big thing. So that's our tone, that's our reflexes. I always leave sensation to last. Now I want to assess power. We've already observed the gait, so that gives us a fairly good idea that power's grossly intact. But if I want to isolate certain muscle groups, so I just usually start by asking for hip flexion. So Joanne, can you lift the knees up for me? Just lift the knees up into there and then I put pressure down here on the knee and I want to feel some adequate response or resistance to say that the power is pretty well preserved. So that's hip flexion. I don't want to push down here or push down. I want to isolate the hip flexors. Now I want to do the hip extensors. So push down to the, to the um, uh, examination table, push down, push, and I can feel her pushing me down. Push down, that's it. Now I'm going to lift your knee up okay, and I want to bring your heel in towards your bottom. Pull your heel in towards your bottom. Okay, now I'm testing the hamstring muscles. Relax and then we always compare left and right. Heel towards hamstrings. Pull, 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 pull. Excellent. And then now I'm going to test the quadriceps function. So I'm going to get my elbow in and my forearm in under the kneecap or under the, the um, popliteal fossa here. And I'm going to say, keep your legs straight. Keep your legs straight. And what I'm doing now is I'm bending down and I want to see activation of the quad. And the same with the other side. Keep your legs straight. Don't let me bend it. And Joanne's resisting that very well. And then dorsiflexion. Um, bring your foot up towards your body. Hold it there. Hold it there. Bring your foot up towards the body. Hold it there. Relax. Ideally, if you're going to do it 100% um, uh, accurately, you'd get them to take their shoes off. And often if I'm going to test the plantar response, so just say I started to see some hyperreflexia or if I identified some hypertonia, I would then also definitely take their shoes off to test the plantar response. And we'll talk about that in a second. Now I want to feel the big toe pulling up towards you. Bring the big toe up. Okay, so I want to make sure there's no toe drop. And bring the foot up, make sure there's no toe drop. I can feel Joanne pulling the toes up and then also pushing down, push down, push down. If they've got really dirty feet, you just go to the side, push down, okay, because you don't want to put your hands on the bottom of their feet or you use, use a tissue or a, a piece of paper. Um, and then uh, if you are going to take their shoes off, you're going to then test the plantar response or the Babinski reflex. And, um, if we come over here to film, the bibi on the on the foot, of course, not on the shoe, um, you then hold the tendon hammer fairly close to the pointy end, starting at the lateral aspect of the heel, scraping up just gently, not, not too hard, not too hard, just about like that, um, uh, but definitely enough to elicit a response, and you're coming in this direction, from lateral across the forefoot to medial. Okay, that's the, the described... Babinski reflex, okay, and what you're looking for is you're looking for a first reaction of the big toe um, moving into extension, which is a positive Babinski. Um, sometimes there's a, there's a because of the, the, the noxious stimulation, sometimes they just pull away, and that's called a withdrawal response. That's not a true positive Babinski. What you're looking for is that first instance of big toe extension. Uh, and also in keeping with everything else, hypertonia, hyperreflexia, uh, for that to then be described as a positive um, plantar response. Further supporting evidence of a positive uh, upper motor neuron condition is what we call clonus. And so what you can do with clonus is just get your hand to, to elicit clonus, is get your hand on either side of the patella and push down briskly and suddenly. And if they have clonus, you will feel some resistance of the patella pushing your fingers back the other direction.
Okay, so that's a um, that's a further supporting clinical sign of hypotonia, uh, hyperreflexia, which then reflects an upper motor neuron condition um, versus lower motor neuron conditions, which don't have those signs. Um, uh, and then the last thing to test is the sensation. So tone power, reflexes, coordination, and sensation. We just go through the dermatomes, okay? So the upper lumbar dermatomes, and then the um, lower lumbar dermatomes, L4, L5, and then S1 under the feet, uh, and then the upper lumbar dermatomes, L1, L2, L3. And they're dermatomal distributions. If you, there's any suspicion that it's a peripheral nerve, then of course you need to test out individual uh, peripheral nerve maps and um, if you're doing a video consultation with me I'll be able to give you some guidance as to uh, where I want you to specifically test and compare and so we'll do that on both sides and compare and contrast um, and then coordination testing we've already seen their gait so we've kind of got a bit of an idea of what their coordination is like but to specifically identify coordination we can do tapping so what I'd like you to do now Joanne is imagine that you've got the accelerator of your car just tap that back and forth as a as a as if you were tapping the accelerator and then the other other side always cross compare and then the next thing is I want you to bring your heel up and I want you to tap it on the front of your shin a few times Okay, a little bit higher, tap, 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 and I want to see good control, and then I want you to run the heel down the shin bone as accurately as you can, good, and then we switch it over, uh, heel, tap it a couple of times, tap, 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 and then run it down the shin bone, fantastic, and relax. So now we've assessed coordination as well. Okay, so that's a, a basic baseline low limb neurological assessment for someone who, who may present with lumbar spine related pain. Um, hope that's of some value to you. Uh, we will do another one later looking at the upper limb and we might also do some uh, videos that sh show sacroiliac joint assessment uh, for, again that's for back pain, proper sacroiliac joint um, clinical assessment and provocation and then we'll also do another video later um, that shows us shows you how we assess multifidus muscle function clinically. All right, all the best.